Jason Tommy. Loud, Jason Loud, thank you. From Talk Story Productions, our neighbors here in the Davies Building. <laughs> it's great to see you. Thanks for coming around, thank man. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. It's <laughs> Such a you. hero. And oh. you still talk to me. I always talk to you, Jay. And I'm not a hero. <laughs> All right. That may be a, a matter of opinion. So I want to know about The Tempest. It's so exciting. And Helen Mirren, one of my favorite actresses in the world. Um, so you, you tell me about it. What's going on? Oh, the hell of it. What can I say? She is the greatest. She is not only down to earth, she is a great actress. And she, of course, starring in our next film called The Tempest. It is the, the original Shakespearean play done in a more Julie Taymor kind of fantastic looking style. All shot, well, mostly all shot here in the Lanai and the Big Island. So we're excited about it. We're going to show it on HIF. It's going to be uh, previewing first time in Hawaii on Wednesday the 20th. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it's going to be in theaters uh, on December, uh, December 10th. Oh, December 10th wow. by Touchstone. Oh, wow, Touchstone wow. has decided to, has agreed to distribute for us. So we'll be going out to theaters then. This is a little preview. Hope you're going to join us, Jay. I will. I, I'll be there for sure. Uh, you can count on it. Okay. So I, I want to ask you, uh, you know, I, I actually forgot. And it was a long time since I read The Tempest. But what's the... Jay, I know you didn't read it. <laughs> I probably use one of those summaries, you know, that we Oh, brought. the so cliff notes, the spark <laughs> notes of the kids. I, you know, I, I was uh, there too, too. But basically, the Tempest is perfect for Hawaii because the Tempest really takes place on this magical, mystical island. Therefore, Hawaii, why not? She's she's a sorceress. In this case, Prospero was originally was a male character, and we, we cast it for Helen Mirren, calling her Prospero. But she's she's an outcast. She's been cast on this island, imprisoned on this island, uh, be, and and the, and she conjures up the storm, the tempest, which she then entraps the people who actually put her on this island. Okay, and they shipwreck on the island, and she's gonna get into her whole evil thing and get revenge. But lo and behold, her daughter, who lives on the island with her, falls in love with the guy who put her in prison. And oh, well, that's complicated. So well, that's not complicated. It's really Shakespeare. It's yeah, conflict. Shakespeare, it's yeah, a lot of things going on. Romance, yeah. you know, revenge. He's still you know. good. He is good. <laughs> I mean, what? This is, was his last play he did. This is the last oh. one Shakespeare wrote. So this is it. This is, uh, this is the big one. Why did you pick this one? Well, I, I wish I could say that I picked this one, but it's not true. I didn't pick it. Julie Taymor, who directed this and who did the Lion, most famous for doing Lion King on, on Broadway and all that, plus Titus and Frida, Morgan Frida and across the universe lately. But she actually came to us and said, hey, I'd love to do this, my next film in Hawaii, you know, and she found us and we were talking about it and she said, and I, was like, I was all excited, I was like, okay, what is your next film? Because I had just seen across the universe, I thought, okay, we're going to do something really fun and kind of, you know, Beatles, lots of, you know, and she said, no, I want to do Shakespeare, and I went, Shakespeare. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shakespeare. You're going to have to sell me on this one. You want to do Shakespeare and you want to do it in Hawaii. Somehow I don't understand that. Yeah. But then, 30 minutes into the conversation, she sold us. She sold us on the vision. She sold us on her what she was going to film and what it was going to look like. And then we, we were sent we in. What did she tell you? Ah, I wish if I could you, tell. If you can remember. Well, I, I don't it know. Magic. I it was magic. It was just magical. She just was able to tell us what she wanted to do on Lanai. Basically, what the look would be, how it would be cast, and and by the end of the I just felt like, yeah, this. It was more about the way she said it, what she said. It was her. It was her package. If it was anybody else, I probably would have said, I don't know. You know, you're gonna have to sell me a little bit more because that's a lot of work to shoot some Lanai and everything. But but with her. I felt she, her vision was strong. She knew what she wanted, and she was going to be able to pull it off. And she did. Well, you know, I remember seeing uh, this movie. It was a takeoff. On, it was a takeoff on Romeo and Juliet. It was right. done about ten years ago. The Baz Luhrmann one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was great. It was, it was, it's not quite the same because that was a lot about, you know, because you had the two houses that were feuding. Typical Romeo and Juliet, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, the Capulets and the Montagues. I think. Yes, thank you. And they were bringing out guns, and they had the low ride in the cars. It was basically it was supposed to be Miami, I believe, at that time. So that was a very uh, modern day look at Romeo and Juliet using still that pentamic uh, iambic meter. Yeah. Uh, this is not. This is more like. You know what time period people always ask me this, and I always and my answer to them is it's in Julie time, which means it's in this time where time has no meaning. Yeah. So that's what this how magical, mystical look is. While the Roman Julius clearly was modern day and all that, it was skyscrapers. Yeah, yeah. This is not. It's, it's like time has just lost everything. In fact, the 
the uh, costume person, Sandy Paul, three-time Oscar winner, by the way, she designed these costumes that were supposed to be when she's on the island, actually feel like she's become part of the island and just lost in time. Time has no meaning. It's when she returns back to Milan that time starts again. So, anyway. Lanai sounds like the perfect pick for that. Well, Lanai was great. Lanai had, I mean, Garden of the Gods, I mean, places I've never ever actually been to or not seen any film on. I mean, not one coconut tree, palm tree, <laughs> run, white sand beach was shot on this thing. It's, it's, it's a rocky, different look. People are going to be amazed that this is Hawaii. I think yeah. this is going to draw tourists yeah, to go yeah, to Lanai. Yeah, I really yeah. do. I think Mr. Murdoch would be happy that, <laughs> that now people will actually go out and look for them. Look for the lanai because it looks like this. But you, you you don't mind that. Nobody minds that it doesn't it doesn't look like and evoke Hawaii per se. It's just it's got a piece of Hawaii in it. It's got a certain cut of Hawaii, but it's not necessarily uh, the tourist view of Hawaii. That's right. That's right. It, it's a different look from Hawaii. I mean, we've seen the Hawaii Five O's, which is a great film by the way, and, and we've seen kind of lost a little bit. This is like another slice of Hawaii that shows off that we can actually shoot things here and show in a, in a different feel, look, aesthetic. That's great. This yeah. is a whole new idea, you know. It's it is. It's a whole concept that has never really been shown in, in, in film, at least to my knowledge, yeah. has never really been shown the way that Hawaii has been. I mean. People still come to me and say, "Where did you film this? This doesn't. This doesn't like Waikiki. This isn't all that." And I'm like, "That's right. We purposely did that." And but as yet, it is all Hawaii. Lava tubes, you know, black sand beaches. You know, it's all the awesome. This is great. So Hawaii. people who, who know Hawaii will be able to relate, oh, yeah. Yeah. and people who don't know Hawaii <coughs> will also be able to relate. That's right. That's right. And then the people who actually know Hawaii who actually go. I didn't even know about this little part. I know most of it, but this little part, they'll rediscover Hawaii, hopefully. So that'll be good. So what, what does a producer do anyway? We don't do much. We drink around. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. <laughs> we drink coffee a lot. We get these PAs. No, we, we, we actually, uh, we, we originate with the concept of the film. What it is that we, what is it we want. We work with the director, the writers, and try to hone this into our project. And then we make it financially feasible. We go out do all the business aspects of it, you know, raising capital, do all those things, and then actually hiring other people and actually executing it. So we're really responsible for the entire That's your soup project. Nuts. It's soup to nuts. That's why if, if, if Julie said, uh, if Julie did not convince you, you wouldn't have done it. It was your call to do it or not do it. That's, that's true. That is true. I mean, you know, Julie is a very powerful person and very, very convincing. But yeah, if she didn't convince us, we probably wouldn't have done it. I don't know if she would have gotten it done after that. She might have, but somebody uh, else, somebody else would have to step in. Uh, but we, we, she sold us. Are there any other producers in in Hawaii that even that are in this this genre that you're talking about? Sure, there's 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 a few of us that are, that are roaming around. I think uh, I think Act Two Twenty One has really made these producers come out because I think before producers are more playing a creative role more, where they were just focused on getting the script, making sure that the elements were there, and then they would always have to go outside for the business financial support. I think what 221 did was suddenly all these business-minded financial people can now suddenly kind of try to hone all the creative skills and marry them with the business acumen, and therefore you have a few production companies in town that can actually stand on their own. And so it makes it easier to, to develop a film industry that way? Well, it makes it so yes, it, it provides the, the infrastructure and support so that the, the industry can grow. Otherwise, you're only going to have half of the formula. You really need it. It's, it's a marriage of two things. It's like, it's art and business, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. So you need both sides of the formula to really be successful. So now that uh, Act 221 is um, not, not, it's not totally dead just yet. It's got two or three months of, hi of, of hypothetical possibility. Uh, but what happens after that? How does that affect the film industry and producers like you? Well, I think what, what happens is now we all have to stand on our own. We all have to be able to find capital without the help of 220. 220 was great for us. We loved it. It was a great program. It got us going. I would probably be safe to say that if 221 wasn't there, I don't, I don't think we would have gotten as far as, as we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has now given us to the next level where we now can go get financing from other sources, you know, uh, whether that be other other investors or banks and everything. Believe me, when we first started a talk story, none of these people would talk to us. 
And now? Now they'll talk to you. Now they'll and talk now to you. with Helen Mirren and the Tempest, they'll, sure. talk to you. they'll talk to you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Almost too much. They'll call you. They'll let <laughs> leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you'll still talk to me. I will always talk to Jay, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay, so you get to be, um, you know, the guy who makes the call on whether the movie works. And then you have to go out and you have to set up all the pieces. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to select the critical players, the critical... Uh, players on the screen, right. um, you have to get the locations, you have to get the gear and right. make sure all the contractors are in place. I mean, right. what a job that is. Well, I mean, it wasn't just me alone. I mean, we I had, there were five producers on this thing. Oh, is that right? So we all had our big, we all had big roles to fill. But, mm -hmm. but when Julie did bring it over, it was Julie, two other producers, the script, which is basically Shakespeare script, script and we're going to rewrite that. So you didn't rewrite it? No. We used the actual, we used the authentic, actual, authentic yeah, oh, that's and, terrific. Yeah. And it, All we, of it? Pretty much. Maybe 98% of it. So just because, you know, we changed gender, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, right, right. And we did have to fit it within cinematically. Right. But basically, it is true to the text. And all we had was Helen Mirren. So all you had, Helen Mirren, Julie Taymor, the script, and another producer. That's, that's what we started with. And by the end of the day, we had seven Academy Awards all working on this thing. We had everybody coming in over to Long Island. We had to ship everything over, getting all the logistics all done, so shipping it all to the big island, and then putting this whole thing together with uh, the music of, of Elliot Goldenthal, who was another Academy Award winner, and Francois, who also was an Academy Award to edit this whole thing together. So there we are, finally, bringing all that together, took the effort of at least five of us, our producers, together, working together in concert to make this work. Wow, it sounds like a management issue if there are five of you. Well, there was. I mean, there was one that was in England, UK, in London, one in LA, or two in LA actually, and then there was us in Hawaii. So our calls were always across the world, strange time zones. We were always like early morning, late at night, talking to people across the world. Plus, by the time we everything was done, we were actually at New York, who was there our line producer. So New York, London, LA, Hawaii. That's all our all our calls were for six months straight. That's how long it took to make the movie? Yeah, well, six months just to get up to production. Oh, okay. How long to produce? Not that long. Not that long, but but because we took a break over uh, Christmas and New Year's. So we did a little break there, but basically we shot most of it in, in, in Hawaii, and then we took a little break, and then we did some of our stage work in New York, and that, that's it. And then it takes, it takes a year or so just to get the special effects. The effects on this are fantastic. Really? The effects because are, it's all that mystery stuff. Oh, yeah. It, we have to make it mystical, and she has to have powers and everything. So it, it, you gotta, she's got to be in a conjurer. So we got to believe that this. So we, we, we built this boat and it shipped it over to Hilo Bay, and we rocked this boat. We made a big wave and sort. But you still need all the special effects. So you can see that she's really rocking this boat and making these guys capsize. You always rock the boat. Oh, <laughs> I love. <laughs> well, so I, I, I learned from you. Jay. I learned from, I learned from you. <laughs> so you you were in you were in the Big Island and you were in Lanai. Anywhere else? Those the only well, venues. Um, uh, New York. New York, we did the stage work. That was just, just the stage, the interior oh, work that oh, we did. Oh, interior, okay. Well, because Julie's from New York, so it was a lot easier to yeah, stay yeah, there. Yeah. So we did a small portion of New York. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, wow. So you, have to, you have to go in for tranches of money on this, or do you, you get it all financed up front, and you have a pot of money to draw from throughout? Yeah, you typically you just want to have everything, all your financing in place before you begin. You can't, you can't, it's too risky, I guess. It's a little know, risky. Yeah. It's a little, I mean, you get stuck on a timeline. Yeah. You don't ever want to be stuck where you don't have enough money to finish the film. Yeah, yeah. That's the worst feeling. Okay, so now you have the film done. Uh, everybody is uh, in place. They go through this process. Mm -hmm. They take the footage. I'd like to know about the editing. Editing is, is my own special oh, interest. Oh, okay. So how, how do you get, how do you do the post-production on a film this ambitious? Well, typically your editor will go through it and edit it. And then the director will then have a chance. We leave the director alone and the editor, and they, they just work together. He's editing electronically or even Le electronically? Oh, yeah, that's just the way, that's to, the way, go. That's way to go. You never cut any real celluloid. So they, they take your celluloid, they put that into uh, electronic. They digitize the whole thing. And then they edit it. They edit it uh, all together. And then so now the director has a cut. And then we look at it and go, then we make decisions. We go, okay, we, we give her suggestions. We give her notes at this point. And then it gets. Again, it gets a couple more times to finally it's to a form we, we really agree with. And then the music and special effects and everything's added. You don't go back and shoot anything again? We, we would. We you, would. If you needed to. If you needed to, you just do some little pickup shots uh, <clears throat> if you needed to. And this one, uh, there were very little. There were some special effect pickup shots we had to do. Yeah. That was it. Uh, everything else was pretty much done. 
But this is where the fun part comes. Once the film is done, you know, then what do you do? That's really the big thing. So right now we, we lined up all these film festivals. So we just uh, we did Venice Film Festival. We were the closing night for Venice Film when Festival. When was that? That was just four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then now and you went there, of course. Of course. I'm not envious. No, I don't want you to get well, it's all work. About it's all work. It's all work. It's all yeah. work. It's drinking that Venetian oh, that, yeah, that's, wine. That's everything. just yeah. That's work. Just, Someone yeah, has to food, get, yeah. Someone had to get that. That's all I'm saying. You know, <laughs> you know, it might as well be me. Tough but, work. <laughs> you know, Venice. I mean, who cannot have a good time in Venice? And, and the festival, the people around it are, are very gracious, very good. And then now we've just gone back, come back from New York, where it was centerpiece of New York Film Festival. Well, well received. It's Julie's Town at Red Luxor. So now, and now we're going to go into the centerpiece now for Boy International Film Festival. Oh, that's great. So that's great. That's coming up soon. That's coming up. So it's on May the 20th. That's the, the first night showing. Happy that's finally everybody at home has been anticipating, wanting to see it. So it's the first time we're going to see it. And then it'll finally go out, like I said, in theaters on December 10th. So that's, you've already established that date, and that's a, a worldwide opening. That's a worldwide, well, it's a, it's a, yes, it's a worldwide opening. I mean, we have our, our, uh, our icon is doing our, our foreign distribution, and, and, and Disney Touchstone is doing our domestic distribution. So all that has been set up years ago. So what do you think, uh, what kind of impression do you have about the public's reaction to this? I know it's early, but yeah. what do you think is going to happen? Well, you know, it's Shakespeare. So there's going to be people who really dig it because they dig Shakespeare. But then there's going to be people who kind of maybe, maybe not get it as well. And that's just the way it is. I mean, we started, when we did this project, we knew that it wasn't going to be this mainstream Transformers. I, I like Transformers, but it wasn't going to be that kind of film. It was going to be a film that was going to be touch people, and, and it was an important film. So we did it for a fairly, relatively little amount compared to something like Transformers. So we knew that we could at least make a go of it. But with the people we surrounded ourselves with, you know, there were such a you know, people who worked on the film that, that it has become this very, very beautiful piece of film. Yeah, yeah I think that's going to be great. Well, I think you know the mark of a, an actor is you can leave an impression on your get to your heart, <clears throat> convey a larger message. How, how did you get these uh, Academy Award winning? People. How don't you pick up the phone and say, hi, I'm Jason? <laughs> no. Uh, how do you do that? Yeah, well, I said, hi, I'm Jason. By the way, Julie Taymor wants to talk to you. <laughs> That's what it was. It wasn't going to come see me. By the way, I'm working on a Julie Taymor film. Would you like to you know, try out for this part? That's what it okay, was. there it is. And by the way, who else is in this? Helen Mirren is going to be there. That you know? so, starts it going. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> the ball was starting to roll right from that. But, yeah, yeah. And, but you know, where are you going to film this? We're going to film this in Hawaii. Uh, okay. Would you like to come to Hawaii? Okay. By that time, you've got them convinced. <laughs> and by the way, we're not going to pay you that much. <laughs> that's after the <laughs> that's, that's, that's after that. By the way, our budget's really small. Or, you know, normally, you're getting this much. I'm sorry. We can't really pay you as much as we'd like. But we'd love to have you on this roll. Can you tell me the budget? The budget was 22 22 That's million. not nearly as much as some of the big Hollywood Oh, yeah. 100 million. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 This probably looks more like 30, 40 million. Yes. Oh, that's great. I mean, in other words, uh, it looks like something that would have cost that much. Yeah. So you got real value there to begin with, like a capital gain right out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, we, we knew that our investors are very important to us. We want to maximize whatever investment dollars we got. So everybody, you know, a lot of these guys did not work for full scale. In other words, what would they normally would charge. Yeah. We, they definitely did not. You're, you're the guy who did the job owning on that. Well, you, you all made of the us. contract. All of us did. Yeah. I, I wish I could say it was just me, but it was Jay. I, yeah. I can't take credit for everything. The, <laughs> the rest of the producers, we all we all joined hands. We knew what we wanted. This was a work of art, then. That's 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 what the selling point among um, the core people. I, I think so. I mean, it is. I, I hate to say it's an art film because then it's sort of it's pigeonholed to this other category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. It, it is a beautiful piece of material. It is Shakespeare. Um, but I, I just think you'll be transformed. Right? I think you'll be watching it and, and feel like you, like you said, you'll be emotionally moved by it. Well, but what is what is it? Uh, what is it that you think will move me? I mean, what is the message, the, to the port parole? You know, the message mm -hmm. that is trying to reach me with. I think that, uh, to me, whenever I see it, I, I think of. I mean, there's, there are many aspects of the Tempest. You know, Shakespeare has many things, but there's there's overriding theme for me when I want watch this thing about forgiveness. She, she, Helen Mirren, Prospero, she, she is about forgiveness. Being able to come to grips with that. Being able to look your enemies. The daughter's lover. No, that, that's, that's Helen Mirren. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so it's, it's, about, it's about looking your enemies in the eye and forgiving them. 
that's what it's about. No, that's that's bail. That's universal, really. It I is. Mean, for most people, I think, or at least most people I know, yeah. life is a series of forgivenesses, really. That's <laughs> right. That's right. I mean, what, I mean, what would you rather be? Be this whole scornful person the rest of your life and live on this deserted island, yeah. or, or actually reach some sort of forgiveness and something, you know, some something good about yourself. Feel good about this, and then be able to move on. Yeah. Isn't that what we really want yeah. to be doing? Anyway, that, that's great. That's, that's great. I think that's a valuable message. And I, I mean, if, uh, I, I, I'm going to go. I will be there. <laughs> I'll be there next to you, as close as I can get. Okay. So, uh, so what, what does this mean for Talk Story? I mean, this this sounds like it. I mean, if it's successful in the box office, mm -hmm. it sounds like it's already treated as successful from an artistic point of view. Oh, thank you. But you haven't you haven't had actual reviews yet. Yeah, we've we've had some reviews, but nothing. They usually hold the reviews until it comes out right. in the theaters. Right. So. I, you know, no matter what the reviews say, Jay, it's to me, we did everything we could, I and mean, to me, it's a beautiful piece of film. I mean, I hope critics love it, but I just know, I've come I've come to the age where, you know what, we're just going to do it and do the best we can, and hopefully people will see that, and we'll just, we'll just have to live with that, so yeah. that'll be it. And we'll yeah. just go on to other projects, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, but I want to I wanted to talk about that. So okay. let's assume it succeeds, uh, you know, not only artistically, but at the box office, okay. and that it makes, uh, you know, the, I, I realize it's a genre sort of film, mm -hmm. but it makes expectations, okay. Okay, whatever that might be, and it, it rewards your investors really okay. well. Okay. Um, what does this mean for Talk Story? Now, certainly already, uh, you know, dealing with this crowd of people, you're more on the, mo the map than you ever were, but what happens now if it's a critical success and a box office success? Oh, if it does, it just gets us to our next film. It just gets us okay. to our next project, and that's what we read. It's all about that. Okay. Uh, it just gets us further along. Um, and shows that Hawaii can ha can do these kinds of things. We, you know, we're we're one of just a few guys here, and that I want to show that that Hawaii is a place to make film. That there are producers here. We're not just come here and and we'll be production assistants and, and work below the line, which really means that you're just workers. We're not really yeah. any control yeah. of production. And we actually can be creative here. I want, I want to show the world that that Hawaii has lot to offer yeah. besides the hotels which are great and the tours which is great we have much more to offer I want to diversify our economy just like you I know Jay you're, you're very yeah, much yeah, for yeah. This. this this is this is really I mean what I'm, what I'm coming to in my own mind is that you're you're stepping over a line here I mean you're now you're you're doing a film of global interest uh, of global global art quality of uh, global interest and and so this isn't what you would expect from a film in Hawaii I mean we've had a We've had a lot of films in Hawaii that were only about Hawaii. That's right. That's uh, right. That were not global. For that reason, they were limited, you know. And That's right. Just an extension of our tourist persona. But now, just as you say, this, this has great significance, you know, for the way people look at Hawaii and the way Hawaii sees itself. That's right. I mean, typically, the, the problem with a lot of the stories that we see coming out of Hawaii is that they're, they're smaller stories. They're surf stories. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things, but they're just smaller. They're just not as able to reach Globia, as you said. But this is truly a global story. It's Shakespeare. You know, it's truly a global story with world-class people working on it. You're right. It has all those elements in it, which will, I hope, you know, take not only talk story, but the whole industry one step up. So how did you get yourself into this situation? I don't know. I fell into it. And, uh, I regret it. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm not an author. I mean, you woke up one morning and said, oh, gee, this is a good day. This yeah. is working well. I think I'll make a film today. No, it, it wasn't quite like that. Uh, how did I fall into this? Well, I think, uh, as you know, I got into private equity. Most of my adult life made in finance. So we got into private equity, G21, and, I, and it was applying to film. And so this company, Talk Story Impression, was kind of coming up, and, I, and they needed a, a CFO. So I, I kind of joined and said, okay, look, I'll... Let's be a temporary CFO. I'm not really. I love film. I love to write, but you know, this is out of what I know I've done before. So let me just not be. But I can help you with the finance. So I became a temporary CFO. One thing led to another. I found myself writing and really getting into it, and bringing back my old days of film. And just before you know, we were running the company at the end of the day. So. I, I met with Chuck Bowler. Uh, oh yes. Week, and we had we had a wonderful time together right here at this table. And um, you know, one of the things that um, you know that we covered, and, and uh, you know, I think most people will agree when they think about it, is that film, film is the um, artistic uh, universe for most people. 
these days. You know, one would have thought that television would have undermined it. One would have thought that all the other art forms would have undermined it, but not. Film is, is the conversation, you know. My wife and I see a couple of films every week. We're fascinated with what comes over cable. Uh, we go Netflix, you know, we, we, we have a, 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 an appetite for film, and I think everybody does. And so you're in a medium which is actually building and getting greater and more resonant with the human heart than anything else. Well, I, I think it has to do with the fact that, that technology has moved ahead, and now the, the bar, the threshold for anybody to make a film is now very low. Anybody can cross over and do this. In fact, we have, we have some of our interns here, and, and they're, I'm amazed at what they can do with basically no money. They just get their camera, and they're able to do that. So I think film has, has technology has spurred this whole growth in film, media, gaming, all that has now made film even more exciting and more powerful than before. Right. So if, you, if you know a little about making a film, then when you watch a film, you're all the more interested. Yes. You, you become familiar with the technical side of it, and that, and that increases your own experience. So do you think we could submit this little tape here and for some kind of award? <laughs> Absolutely. We, this is award-winning photography you got here. <laughs> you got such talent. Oh, my God. <laughs> so can you tell me the secret of your next project? Well, sure. Okay. Sure, I'll tell you a little bit about it. The next one we're doing is called The Arabian Nights. Uh, it's it's Shirazad's tales, and I'm going to film it some in Hawaii and most of it in China. That's what we're looking at. It's going to be a Hollywood feature, and we're just using Hawaii, uh, the China's backdrop studios as 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 a way of, as a character in this thing. So we're still forming and putting it up together, but that's going to be it's going to be shot in 3D. It's it's Chuck Russell is going to be directing. He did Eraser uh, and, and the Mask, and he's got great special effects. We're going to make. The, basically, the magic carpets fly over people's heads. Oh, wow, I gotta see that. <laughs> you, you, you sold me already in, in, in 60 seconds. You sold me. <laughs> You're an easy sell. <laughs> You're a great guest. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming down. Thank I hope you. you still talk to me. I will. I will. You I promise. promise. I promise. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you.